You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's time for the Game Force. Yeah. So I have this thing laying around for a very long time in my storage. And yeah, the thing is with this, like, I never got the chance to review it. Yeah, and unfortunate, I was more like. Oh boy, I don't have the time for it to set it up because this thing doesn't come with an SD card whatsoever. If firmware, you just need to set it all up and never got the chance to do it. So I made some time and I just wanted to check it out here on the channel because the Game Force is a very interesting, yeah, just quite an interesting piece of technology. And also it was a little late because when it was released, a lot of competition already, I say released one with a similar rock chip. So let's take a close look and zoom in on the specifications. So I want to take a close look at the display and everything of the specification of the device. This thing is quite interesting. So first of all, the rock chip. So when this thing came out, a lot of say, similar devices already used the rock chip. So this was nothing very special. It comes with a quad core running up to 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU was a Mali G31 MP2. It comes with one gigabyte of RAM. Here you can see over it, it comes with a screen that is 3.5 45 inches so it's not like the biggest display we're seeing but we do have like the resolution 640 by 480 this is amazing for let's say retro games and they are claiming have a 10 to 15 ms of let's say response time and a pretty damn good viewing angle but overall like it comes with a 3000 million battery here you can see charging time three hours playing time six up to eight hours depending how hard low you basically put this thing and of course the brightness and of course what kind of games you're playing but nevertheless this is what you're going to get with the game force yeah so let's clean it up. These wipes are very nice. Also using them for my glasses. Yeah, there we go. All right. So basically what you're going to get is a very interesting piece of technology, if you ask me. And what I really like about it is what you can see over here. It's the angle at the end of the, dis of the, the device itself. Simply because when you're putting it in your hand, this part will be basically like comfortable, very be like resting on your fingers. And I, might, I must say like I've been playing around with this thing after like setting it up and it was very comfortable. I really don't like the joysticks. They are not a great, especially with, I personally really like just to have like the Nintendo Switch version, especially when it comes to the top over here or the rocker itself they love to call it the rocker yeah rock the rock home the game force so when you're looking at the buttons they are very tiny over here do you have like an interesting angle and when you touch them they feel amazing even they are very small the d-pad got a very nice touch to it we even go against select start we have a home button there they configure it very interesting because you can basically like navigate through the menu like volume and stuff like that brightness you can need to combine some certain keys for doing that and of course we do have like the one and two button so when you're looking at this handheld it doesn't have like a volume or another thing we do have like a headphone jack out and type c in so it's basically like different like all the other ones but let's boot it up we have the card configured entered so we can power it on sometimes it gives me this weird message the first time that i didn't implement the card but it doesn't do it this time it comes with emulate like this one has been completely configured 4.5 especially for this device another thing i find quite interesting is not only the resolution but the way how they implemented the display so what you can see over here, we do have like a space between the front glass and then we do have like quite interesting specs over there. So what I like about this is that it, it's interesting to see how this plays because it gives you like a completely different experience. All right, so okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Okay, what I really liked about the one or two buttons, I basically said it wrong at the beginning. We do have like the option so to, to basically to control the volume, do all kind of other things with it. I think it's pretty damn neat that you can do it like this and they configure the extra buttons. If you just want to use one for a hot, for a hot key, you can do it too. But what can we play with this device? So when you're going to look into the game list, you can basically add a lot of stuff. I think the maximum will be PlayStation Portable that we have like problems with. Maybe some problems with N64. But this is going to be great for just playing some old school retro games like many devices you have seen before. The combination with Dreamcast, you name it. We're going to try a couple of them just to show you what we can do with it. Another interesting thing they did are having two LEDs over here. What you can see over here, this one that keeps blinking is basically like showing that it's reading data. And this one is for powering on. Another thing I really like are the front facing speakers. They sound pretty damn good. So another thing I wish they didn't do is like putting all of the text at the front. So Game Force, I think it's okay. Some people really hate it. 
but putting all of this like a top over here it's quite annoying including some address it's really annoying Okay, so the first thing I wanted to try out is basically like Dead Alive 2. Let's take a Dreamcast. But you can see like it doesn't run out of the book very well. Maybe with some tinkering I can get it to work better. But a little bit of a bummer. Alright guys, so next up let's try the PlayStation. But most of these devices run PlayStation 1 very well. So it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. Maybe with some minor hiccups because this is not running on Duck Station. Now, like I mentioned before, the audio of this thing is absolutely amazing. But playing this game with these tiny freaking buttons, I really hate it. For just putting acceleration in here in the game, okay, but if you want to start sliding, it's really difficult. Or oh, my fingers are just too big for this. They are too thick for the tiny buttons. Here, I cannot do my drifting. It really sucks. Reset. Reset. Alright, so next up I wanted to try some PlayStation Portable. Depending what kind of game you're playing and how everything has been configured, some games are to a certain point playable. But you can see like it dips to 25. So the question remains, is this actually playable? I think not. Because it's going to be happening a lot of stuff on the screen. You can see dips back to 20, 16. It's absolutely horrible. So that's basically what you're going to get with PlayStation Portable. Pretty damn poor performance. But I think when it comes to a device like this, absolutely when you want to play some old school games, they look amazing. The special ratio in combination with the awesome like say looking display. It's so such a like blast to the past with this. Then it's the question like, what kind of, let's say, handheld should you buy? Because there are so many of these things. And again, like, the display is a little bit deeper than normal. I think that is a pretty damn different, weird way to play, but also, like, very interesting. All right, so next up, let's try some N64. So N64 will be an issue with this. And I mean, like, a lot of games will not run great, but the ones that do run are, like, a lot of fun to play. For example, this one. But mm -hmm. I think one of those underrated games, maybe a lot of people don't even know it has existed, but it's such a blast to play. The soundtracks alone are so much cool than their typical game. Which is my shooting button. Oh yeah, that was my looping. Oh, there it is. So it's a very good way to demonstrate you how everything works, including the shoulder buttons. This game is actually made pretty damn good for an analog stick. And I have no problem reaching every single button, so I personally really like playing this game on here. <laughs> yeah, that sound effect. <laughs> But when you're looking at the Game Force, I think it's a very interesting piece of tech. So if you just want to play some old school games, you don't mind like tinkering with the software. Yeah, it's a pretty damn cool piece of equipment. Like I really love the shell itself, the way how it just feels and plays. That is for me like very important. Comes with a beautiful display with a great express ratio. The only downside I think are the beautiful like display is going to be ruined by the horrible, let's say, text out the front. But beside that, great audio. I personally don't like these, let's say, smaller buttons, but you can also like see they wiggle a little bit too much if you ask me. The D-pad is quite nice. The analog sticks play good, especially when you play some N64. It's a great piece of equipment. And again, let me know in the comments what do you think of this. Would this thing like still worth picking up or is it something you just, just skip because there are so many, let's say, companies creating the same kind of hardware.